The following Parkinson's Path podcast is provided by Leanna Marie with All About Parkinson's and Answers for Elders Radio. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And we are here with the wonderful Leanna Marie, and we're talking about caregiving for Parkinson's disease. And you know, if you are a caregiver to any aspect, I think a lot of the information, it's not just about Parkinson's disease. I think it's really about how, what it's like, what your journey's like, and everyone has their own, like Leanna talked about snowflakes. And I think that's really what it is. It's a unique situation. And certainly, um, Leanna, um, tell us a little bit more about your caregiving journey. We talked a little bit about, you know, what you could have done different or what you're most proud of, but let's look, get into the nitty gritty of it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Suzanne. I, uh, and I think earlier I mentioned that, you know, when you start out, whether you're a spouse or a daughter, like, like I was, um, it's, it's really going to depend on, you know, what, what age probably your loved one has been diagnosed mm -hmm. at in my mom's case, she was in her forties. So obviously it was a lot younger and she was going to have a longer journey with Parkinson's. Some, some folks are diagnosed in their seventies, eighties mm -hmm. even. Right. And so they're going to have a shorter time. So a Absolutely. lot of this depends on, you know, the overall length of time that, you know, one might be living with Parkinson's, but for me, the journey having been so long, I really got to see and be a part of, you know, this um, slow progressing chronic illness mm -hmm. and one that, you know, I evolved from care. Well, I actually cheerleader to care partnering, which I think is a great term that we use nowadays, you know, cause you're the partner, not necessarily hands-on caregiving and then caregiving later where I was doing some of that nitty gritty stuff, if you will, helping uh, with those daily tasks and things that my mom needed. And then ultimately handing those, some of that off to professionals who cared for mom in long-term care. And then at that time, I spent a lot of my, my time advocating for my mom and, you know, really just trying to get the people that were quote unquote in charge of her care to take the best care of my mom, teach them a little bit about Parkinson's because mm -hmm. as many who have experienced this know that Parkinson's disease is still, even though we know a lot more about it these days mm -hmm. in the healthcare profession, um, there is a lot that's missing. And so I spent a lot of time teaching, if you will, for lack of a better right. word, than, you know, staff on, on best ways to, to make my mom's life easier. <laughs> right, so, right. Well, and, and also Leanna, I, I think for you, especially, um, in dealing with, uh, you know, starting to write a book, you know, mm -hmm. being, being in that point where you're immersed in research and education and all those things. And yet I'm sure your family members were not as educated as you were. So there right. was that side of, wanting to do right for your loved one, but at the same time, not wanting to alienate and, <clears throat> you know, disparage your family members. So I, I'm right. assuming you had to walk kind of a fine line. How, how did that work with your family members? Yeah. Um, well, in my case, we, have, you know, I have three siblings um, and then my mom had remarried. So she was, she was, um, you know, with Dave, his name was Dave. And so we had, there are different dynamics of me figuring out kind of, if you will, I like to call myself a project manager, maybe in a way like where I was like, okay, so here's what Leanne is going to do. Could, you know, sister one do this, could brother one do this and could, you know, and that kind of thing. And it works well when everybody's on the same page. Right. Mm -hmm. But when people aren't all on the same page, it doesn't. Um, so the idea was to try to, we actually did have back then it was Skype, not zoom, but we would have Skype calls with my siblings and I, and sort of me kind of explaining, here's what I think mom needs. And what do you guys think about that? Um, and again, I was pretty fortunate because my siblings and I all pretty much were on this agreeing um, from time to time. I get pushed back and Leanna, that's way too ridiculous. Mom does not need that, you know, and I'd be like, but, but I really want that for her. And, you know, sidebar, my mom had appointed me power of attorney of her care. So 
I felt like I had this duty to kind of, you know, sure. make sure I gave her the best possible outcomes. Quality um, of life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, that's my job now. I mean, it's on paper. Um, So I, I maybe sometimes took that a little too seriously, I suppose, but my siblings and I, I think again, you know, we talk about perspective and and it's easier now for me to say this because yeah. you know, I have a few years past the time what we were in that. Um, but I think, you know, talking it over with my siblings was very helpful and explaining my point of view and then them explaining their point of view was helpful because I did not necessarily always, I was so like, like you said, you know, you're, you're in, in it all the time that you don't realize right. you know, what, what you're doing. You can't or not see doing the or, forest for the trees. Forest for the trees. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's helpful to talk things over. And then also for me to see, um, you know, things from their perspective with Dave, when he was spending, you know, day in and day out with my mom, sometimes during a couple, a couple of those years became very toxic and, uh, for their relationship. And so we did eventually have to kind of intervene and, um, and help that situation, um, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but yeah. So yeah. those are some things that every family yeah. has different Sure. Issues. Absolutely. And, well, and the other thing too, when you're saying that it's like, it goes right back to expectations. Like what we talked about earlier, it's like, we all have different expectations of what the scenario is going to be mm -hmm. and perspectives. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's also difficult when, you know, I mean, in many ways you were lucky because you had family, um, you know, right. that was supportive. For sure. Um, I didn't have that. So you were, yeah. you know, you were lucky girlfriend, <laughs> but on the other hand, I think that we all make mistakes too. And, yeah. and, um, certainly it's sometimes hard when you don't know what to do, but you don't even know what to ask for because you're just so tired and burned out. Did you ever find yourself getting burned out? You know what? I, I, I did have an implosion, if you will, when mom, when I was at a crossroads of, you know, my, my sibling or two may have accused me of holding on too tightly to mom when she was getting far along into dementia and that mm -hmm. I was trying too hard to keep this life that was no longer a life, you know, mm -hmm. alive. And that what is quality, this discussion of like, what is quality of life to mom? You know, like just keeping her alive is not important if she isn't having some joy or exactly. something positive. Right. So there was a bit of a, you know, again, it's so much easier now for me to talk about it, but at the time, you know, you're letting go of your loved one, your, you know, your, your, your mama, right. This is, well, like and, and you were also power of attorney, right? So you had to, so, you had to be her advocate yeah. and you had to be that final decision maker about things, yeah. which, yeah. I can only imagine can be, um, you know, in your case, just like I had the same issue at the end of my mother's life that I had to make some decisions. Um, and I had to live with those the rest of my life when I said it's okay to, you know, start, uh, you know, initiating comfort care and right. letting her pass. And that was really, really hard because they could have kept her alive but she couldn't eat any food. She would have been somewhat conscious, but right. she would have not been living a quality of life. And I'm just yeah. going like, you know, she wouldn't want to be like this. Right. And so, you know, we all go through this process, right? And and again, we're talking about late, late stage. And I don't want to dishearten right. people who are <clears throat> mid-stage, you know, and they're like, oh my gosh, like this, because this may, may not be your life, right? This, right. but- all that to say, I, and, and, and on that point, I will say that, you know, there was a time when mom was in, I believe it was her third long-term care home and she was in the dementia section of the home. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the doctor who I had a good relationship with is telling me, by the way, your mom's probably going to starve to death because she's not eating. And we, and I, and I was like, you know, that doesn't sound like my mom. I don't know if that's dementia or not. And sure enough, over the, you know, fast forward a few months, um, where my mm -hmm. aunt and I basically said, no, no, no. I don't think that this is mom's not hungry because every time we give her food, she's eating. For example, we, we made it our mission to make sure that she wasn't going to quote unquote starve to death. I, I think that 
and sure enough, she didn't, we moved her to another home and magically she gained 30 pounds back. You know, there you go. I want to say that, you know, there's this balance of like letting go, but also saying, Hey, you know what? Have we tried every, like, is, have we given mom every best opportunity, um, to have a bit of a, a good life? Um, and, and I felt better knowing that we right. had, um, so, so these are just things in hindsight, you know, that yeah. you know, may be helpful down the road with somebody who has, you know, end of care of that or end of life right. care. That so kind of thing. your mom was in, in long-term care for eight years. Yeah. So what was your experience with the healthcare providers as a whole? Well, yeah, I mean, we could probably do an entire episode on, on let's that. do um, that. <laughs> and it is, it is for sure something that is a challenge because, um, I would say, it was uh, challenging uh, that mm-hmm. to, to summarize would be challenging and whether mom needed to go an emergency into the uh, hospital or she was in long-term care. It seemed to me that there was a big disconnect between what people thought Parkinson's was and what it really was. And so right. I ended up doing a lot of time educating nurses that of course we all know there's can be a high attrition rate. So mm-hmm. I'm always continually saying, Hey, it's really important. She gets her meds on time every three hours. So that would be something that was very common, but because we don't have a lot of time to talk about this, I would just summarize by saying it was challenging. Um, but, uh, at the end of the day, I felt like I did make a difference by mm-hmm. advocating and, and, and being around and talking mm-hmm. to the staff. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would love to delve into that a lot more, Leanna, um, when we have more time. And yeah. certainly, uh, I think we could do a whole show on that, for sure. <laughs> where we start talking about the be- yeah. beginning, middle stages, uh, specialists. Um, yes. how, and, and I think what your role is as a caregiver of how you can, you feel like you can advocate. And there's also resources I think families don't understand, like care conferences and why right. they're so important. And so um, I'm going to hold you partner. to it, girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. So in the meantime, everyone, I would love to have you check out Leanna Marie, who is the author of The Complete Guide for People with Parkinson's Disease and Their Loved Ones. Her second book is Everything You Need to Know About Caregiving for Parkinson's, and the upcoming book is The Parkinson's Path. So Leanna, it has been such an honor to have you with us. And we are, again, going to be talking about the holidays. Coming up next, it's that time of year in the Pacific Northwest. (laughs) The preceding Parkinson's Path podcast is provided by Leanna Marie with All About Parkinson's and Answers for Elders Radio. To learn more about Leanna's story, her books, The Parkinson's Wall of Honor, and more, go to allaboutparkinson's.com. Thank you.